Hello and welcome to the Your Business Card Guy Practical Corel Draw Tips. Today I want to talk about vectorizing. Vectorizing is the process of taking a bitmap graphic and converting it into a vector graphic, thus allowing you to use Corel to edit every aspect uh, as you might need. I had a customer recently ask me to take this graphic, this is a part of their logo, and they wanted me to change the color and remove the background so that we could use it in a couple of specific instances. Uh, you have a couple of options. You could obviously uh, take this into some graphic design software and uh, essentially try to paint over it. We could do a mask, remove the background. There's a, there's a variety of ways you could go about um, editing such a graphic, but understanding that the client was going to need this from an ongoing viewpoint. They wanted to be able to edit uh, here going forward uh, I wanted to change this into a vector, might as well do it right the first time, and then I could do anything I needed to do whenever the client asked me to do it. A uh, couple of quick ways to remove the background, one would be to simply use the edit bitmap function, uh, just like in another video, you can check it out on my channel, uh, and you can see an example of that here. It's the same graphic with no black background, however as I zoom in you can still see that it has that jaggedy bitmap look and I still cannot edit this at all. I can't change the color, fill it, or any of such thing, you know, add a border or whatnot. I, all I have are what controls you have for a bitmap. So I could take it into Photo Paint and edit it there. But within Corel, within my uh, designs that I'm putting together, uh, whether it be a Facebook tower, a business card, you know, banner, etc., uh, I'm very limited in what I can do with it. Um, besides the fact that I don't get to, to use a high-res version for anything very large. So back to our original graphic. Again, you can see that's the same one. I want to convert this and make it vector. So I click on the JPEG here. And for the simplicity of this video, I'm going to choose the uh, simply one option. There are many. You'll notice here when I hit the trace bitmap, there are uh, a lot of options available. In this case, I'm going to choose outline, and clip art and this is essentially a set of defaults I'm gonna click that it brings up the window it runs a process and bingo it's changed it already and I haven't done anything and that's simply because it has some presets and it remembers my selections from previous uses in this case remove background it ascertained basically assumed that this black field was the background and removed it. Uh, it's also gone through based on the smoothing and detail and, and whatnot settings here, done some uh, work with its algorithm. You can obviously play with these options and see what effect that has on your design. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, zoom in to this graphic. On the left it's the before and on the right it's essentially the after and you can see the difference very distinctly right here very rough looking very jaggedy right the low res pixelated look on the right perfect lines perfectly smooth uh, it's the stereotypical vector look now it still has done its best to maintain the original look by creating the uh, stepped color set it's got the dark blue medium and light blue uh, attempting to replicate what it uh, determined to be the colors here uh, in the end, because the client has requested that this be a solid color, I'm going to do away with that. And let's take a look at how we did that. Say OK to this. It converts my graphic. Uh, and th now we have uh, just the vector version. We don't have to worry about the, uh, the other version at all. You'll notice in the object manager, it's a group of 30 objects. I could simply select a color that the client wants, and it would convert all of the curves within this grouping to that color. I'm just going to click that so you can see it. And you know what? I could use that um, just as it is and be done. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with that. And depending on what you're doing, you may just that just might be it. What I want to do, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to show you another option so you're aware of. Uh, this is a grouping of objects. But for simplicity's sake, uh, I don't see the point in having a bunch of objects that my computer has to keep track of. I'm going to convert it. Uh, take it one more step and make it into a single curve so that I can manipulate it, change its color, add a border, whatever, uh, and not have to worry about doing it with multiple objects or anything such as that. So what I'm going to do here is go up to my toolbar and I'm going to ungroup this set. You'll notice on the right it has 
expanded this down. However, they are all still selected, so it is highlighted. Um, if you have clicked off of it, you will want to re-highlight the entire grouping for this next step. We are going to use the weld function, which will combine all of these curves into one curve. And when this occurs, Corel um, does a little bit of conversion and you'll see the effect that it has on our drawing. So I'm going up to the toolbar, choose the weld option. You'll notice it says combine the objects into a single one. Click that. And there we go. Now it is a dark blue. It, it's uh, one of the colors because it is a single object. It had to select a color. It can't be, you know, it's not going to automatically do some kind of a, a fill for you. Um, it's assuming that you want it to be solid and single, which is in this case exactly what we want. Um, now I could be done again. I could just make it blue again and be done with it. Uh, I now have a single curve that I can manipulate, change the fill, change the color, you know, whatever I need to do to, to finish the graphic. And I can also manipulate it um, based on the customer's requirements. And I'll show you just a couple of examples of that. I'm going to zoom into here and you'll notice it has this white and that's from before where it had kind of a highlighted area um, that it uh, essentially was thought of as being separate from the rest of the drawing and so that's why we've got this hole if you will. I'm going to collect the shape tool and delete a few nodes off here and after a few clicks the hole will go away. And there we go. So it's now filled in and you could do the same with the the lower one, the little highlighted area. Again, you can obviously leave it if that's the requirements of your drawing. You know, it's whatever you need to do to uh, meet what you're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to click these nodes off. And so now as I zoom out, you'll see that it's completely solid, no holes. I can change the color, you know, as needed uh, without having to worry about any of the other extraneous stuff. Um, so again, we've used the trace function to take a bitmap into vector. We've then ungrouped and wedded everything to make it a single curve. And now I can go through my drawing and use the shape tool to clean up uh, any bumpy spots, any holes, and essentially manipulate my vector graphic until I am completely satisfied with the end result. And then what I have is a graphic that can be used from uh, a business card up to uh, a vehicle wrap, which is in fact what this was used for. Uh, the end result was that it's covering half of the guy's truck and he needed something that would look very nice uh, in that application and using a vector graphic is the only way to get that done. Uh, thanks again for watching the Your Business Card Guy Practical Corel Draw Tips. We'll talk to you next time.